right, guys. <clears throat> welcome, welcome to another guide. I just wanted to real quickly take some time to explain a little bit about what I've figured out in Hell is Others. I've been playing it for a couple days now, as pretty much everyone has, because it's only been out since the 20th. And there's not a lot of guides out, obviously. So I was uh, I figured I'd go ahead and take the lead on that. So first off, today's video is going to cover how to progress in this game. Very similar to Tarkov and other hardcore games, it doesn't give you a lot of good information. So I've figured out everything pretty good from here, and I'm going to give you guys a little bit of insights on uh, certain aspects of the game and what I think of them. So. Um, First off, you know, the biggest question a lot of people have and what I was uh, wondering when I first started was how do you unlock stuff? How do you get more furniture? How do you get guns? How do you use the bank, et cetera, et cetera? Well, that's a very simple question. Uh, all you got to do is do your quests. So you want to do as many quests as you can, as quickly as you can, because if we look at the rewards here, we start getting some pretty interesting things, especially when we start looking at the quests for Octave and for the Chasm. So Octave generally gives you furniture and the Chasm generally gives you uh, apartment expansion slots, right? So here I got a table from a quest. I got an additional inventory slot for my character by doing the Chasm's blood quest. There's a shelf, two condo expansion units for the second Chasm quest. And what that is, it's going to be two extra walls that you can break down in your apartment. So if we go in here and then we press B and then we, well, I guess we could have just pressed B. And then if you, I've already done it on this one. So it's maximum expanded and I can't go out anymore, but you can actually get multiple floors in your little apartment here. So up here, I expanded this one and all you got to do is you got to go up to this black area and then you would hold it down. And if you have a condo expansion unit available, you would break it down, but that's what he calls a pickaxe, but I don't have any, so we can't do that right now. But anyways, if we look at the map here, each one of these icons is actually a trader. Now, you, when you first start out, you're not going to have any traders at these locations or very few of them. And the reason for that being is you can only see them after you unlock them by receiving the quests for them. Now, how do you receive quests for traders? All you got to do is you, every time you go to sleep, the next time you wake up, a new trader will contact you. There's 28 total traders, and there's uh, up to three tiers of quests for all of them, I believe, because there's three levels to most of the traders. So quite a lot of quests to do. You know, that's over 70 right there. And uh, basically all you got to do when you unlock them, if you want to buy whatever they got, is you would go into the raid with an amount of cash on you. And you can use it that way, or you can bring your cash over time and deposit it at the bank, which you will once again unlock through some early missions. And then once you deposit it at the bank, you can withdraw it from any ATM in the city. But you cannot use ATMs to deposit. All right. So besides traders, uh, another thing that a lot of new players run into, a big problem, is uh, what do you do when you run out of everything? Well, as of the last patch, they actually made it so that whenever you die, these plants in front of your... Uh, in your hallway will respawn with 30 bullets before it used to couple, take a couple days, but now at least one plant will have bullets in it every time. Excuse me. So the fact that we get 30 rounds, which is three magazines from the starter gun of free ammo is really good because that means basically all your runs are, they don't require any investment. So all you really want to focus on when you're brand new is getting your apartment expanded getting furniture because they give you stat bonuses that uh, they don't go away as long as you have the furniture out in your house. And then you want to uh, basically just get the quests and say you got to go get cockroaches like this. You're going to go out with the starter pistol if you're having a hard time, you know, just like any of the other extraction shooter game and just start doing the quest. Bam, 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 bam. Because when you get a quest item and you go to the trader and you turn it in for their quest, you can turn it in mid raid and then if you die, you don't lose any progress. So even if you're having a really tough time in this game, all you got to do to make progress is to find something and then get it to the trader before whoever is looking for you kills you. 
and you will inevitably get further and further into the game eventually getting to the point where you're going to have enough equipment available to you that it's going to equalize the playing field a lot and i would say that that comes at around credit level 10 is when you're going to start to have things like enough inventory slots for example to start making a difference in your engagements and stuff that i started feeling a difference around there um all right and now besides that what matters in this game like what is the important things you should be focusing on right well let me tell you right now i'm close to the end game which i think is like level 20 into prestige but also with the quests and stuff or at least it feels that way well let me tell you what i find most important um first of all you really 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 do need money in this game it didn't seem like I needed money and you kind of don't need money because your gun and your bullets are free, but you really do in the late game because how you get more storage and how you get more furniture and stuff is actually from these traders right here. There's one here. They sell uh, like containers. This person sells potted plants. This person uh, sells decoration furniture. And then this person sells appliance furniture down here. Now, each of these shops have items that cost anywhere from 2000 for something small, like a stack of books, all the way up to, I think the last purchase I made was 390,000 uh, creeds. So you're gonna need to farm a lot of credits, not only for your furniture, but also for progression and all this stuff and the gear. And then once you start unlocking the traders and stuff too, you have access to their inventories, which are going to uh, then create more of a money sink because for example the hospital you can buy medications and med kits and bandages and stuff and each one's about 6,000 credits so you definitely want to prioritize making money now how do you make money the short simple answer is you want to look at your your junk dealer and you want to go to the day that you have that's a gold or a weapons day okay and the reason being that gold and weapons they sell for just so much more, right? Like here, I could sell this for 31,000. Now, even if I were to loot a med kit out in the wild, the most I could sell that for is 4,500. And med kits are rare. So even a katana is, you know, 5,000 for my credit level, uh, value 8,000. So it makes, it's, it's a no brainer that weapons are very lucrative, but you can't store them in large amounts in your apartment early on. So, that's why, once again, it's so important to level to get the storage and the inventory spaces that you can start to really make money like this. But in the meantime, instead of focusing on just weapons, what you really want to try to prioritize is hoarding gold. Now, I wasn't able to hoard gold as I leveled up until my gold days so I could sell them. But um, if you can, try it, especially for the ones that are worth like 40000 or more. Those are definitely worth holding on to because it's so much harder to make money outside of gold and weapons, guys. I saved all the gold I found uh, and on my next gold day I sold it I made 290,000 credits and the whole other time I was up to that point I was trying to farm credits didn't make a single fucking didn't make anything close to that okay I probably made like 50,000 so big difference there and then besides that what matters is getting furniture not only for the storage but for the stats and then also eating mushrooms and pills so that you get higher bonuses to your stats like on the right there and that helps a lot too. But all right, guys, I think that'll uh, wrap it up. If you guys want to see more detail about any of this, let me know. Uh, I don't know exactly what people are struggling with. So leave it in the comments below if you want to see some topic explained a little more in depth or you're struggling with some things and stay safe out there, guys. I'll catch you next time.